Welcome to Politics yep. Done Right. My name is Egberto Willis, your host. We are going to have a great show for you today. Good morning, Houston. Good morning, Harris County. Good morning, Texas. Good morning, United States. And good morning, the rest of the world. Hey, we are going to have a great show for you today, folks, as usual. But you know how we start this show. We always make sure to go to the control room to our two resident geniuses. How are my peeps doing inside of the studio today? Yeah, we're still looking for those geniuses, Egberto. Ah, uh, you know that. Uh, come on, no, come on. No, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Jack, please talk to me, Jack. I know you have the word of the day. Okay. Uh, sometimes to get the ladies to call, you have to uh, romance them a little bit. So, oh, read a little poetry. oh, oh my Let's God! And your piece to that other di- piece I did. Um, I asked the ocean what it's like to emote. The tide answered back. To emote is to span the difference between rage and calm, anger and love, ebb and flow. Don't choose one over the other. Your feelings are a veil which the spirit views life through. Emotion is the spirit moving you from behind the veil. I kissed the tide, stood open-armed to the ocean, and offered up this prayer. Let me live life with deep currents and strong tides of emotion, moving me from behind the veil. Well, it depends on which emotion. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Who wrote that? (laughs) Uh, This is is my, uh, my spirit warrior, Jack Running Fox, wrote that. Oh, wow. And you are so honest. You didn't even say, well, like, Berto, I wrote that. <laughs> spirit, <laughs> spirit warrior is going back to sleep now. <laughs> <laughs> all right, man. Hey, thank you. That that was, hey, you know what that's all about, right, guys? We want more women to call into the show at 713-526-5738. But anyhow, let's get busy with the show. Title of the show today, No Labels is a Fraud. Aquino on Democra- Aquino on Democracy. I always pronounce his name the wrong way the first time I get it. Biden warns MAGA and Dems better better for the economy. Don't fall for the trap, folks, that's being laid by no labels. We're going to talk a little bit about that. We're going to also talk about President Biden, who warned MAGA yesterday, don't mess with the FEMA funds or else. And, you know, uh, by the numbers, and it's not even close, Democrats are provably provably better for the economy. Last night, I had a lot of messages on on YouTube after people looked at the video telling me that I was crazy for saying those things. And I just said, look at the numbers, look at the numbers for yourself. And it's not just correlation. It's actually policy. But to start the day, we are bringing in one one of the most prolific activists in Houston that's making a difference. Neil Aquino, uh, he is the director, the, the founder of the Houston Democracy Project. He's in here with us today. If you are in the, uh, if you're watching us on the videos, you'll see him as well there. The Houston Democracy Project works every day to make democracy a top issue in 2023 Houston city politics. But it's deeper than that. Uh, Neil has been working on many other issues relative to our democracy. Neil will be discussing the reliance of some Democratic Houston municipal candidates on Republican votes and the need for cross-racial and complete coalitions in Houston and Harris County to protect democracy. So without further ado, I'd like to bring brother Neil Aquino into the fold. Neil, how are you doing this morning, my friend? Thank you for getting great. up. Hello. Well, you know, it's Thank great you. that you got up this morning, this early to get get on, get on to the program. I appreciate that. Any any morning I get up, it's great. Absolutely. <laughs> anyway, Neil, tell me a little bit, first of all, about what you're doing with this new project that you've started. So um, I, I've begun the Houston Democracy Project, started it in, in late May. And it consists of uh, a blog, uh, the Houston Democracy Project blog, and it consists of my efforts. I've been having a series of one-on-one meetings with candidates and with opinion leaders and with rank-and-file Houstonians. And we want to get 
um, democracy on the agenda in Houston 2023 municipal races, mayor, controller, um, HCC board, HISD races, which are still going on, Houston City Council, all of it. Um, democracy is relevant to, 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 to every single municipal office. And we want to make sure that, um, we want to make sure that the protection of our freedom is, 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 is present in every office holder. Now you have uh, let, let's back up a bit because you are not new to any of this. Uh, you have a project that you are that you co-founded, founded. I, I don't quite remember if founded or co-founded. That's been going on now for several years to pretty much keep uh, uh, Senator Cornyn in check. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, I'm I'm one member of the John Cornyn Houston office protest, which is every Tuesday, eleven thirty to one, fifty three hundred Memorial Drive. Next week will be our 343rd week. And so Senator wait, Cornyn- Wait, 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 wait. Repeat that so people can hear. I want folks to hear the dedication. Repeat that again. Next week will be week 343 uh, of the Cornyn office protest. And and the issue, yes, is Senator Cornyn, but we are on, the, we are on that corner at Memorial and Dietering every week to set the physical example of showing up. So voting is essential. Please vote. But in addition to voting, we're going to need to show up physically and non-conventionally for these fights over white supremacy and authoritarianism and anti-democracy ahead. So we want to set that physical example of, of, of showing up all the time. And what I love about that particular project, let's talk a little bit about that before we get to the to the issues that are that are local is uh, you are there's something called muscle memory or the, the mind has a thing like muscle memory. When you're you when you get used to being politically engaged, you have a tendency to remain politically engaged. And which is, you know, I have this phrase that I say uh, uh, po- uh, citizenship should be a, re- a rather political involvement should be a requirement for citizenship, right? And I think a, a lot of what you guys are doing out there with the consistency of being engaged, Cornyn knows that you guys are out there every single week. So therefore, anything that he does every 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 day in, in, in the Senate will be made ava- available for everybody to know. I think the Cornyn office knows that we're there and, and, and the many passers-by know that we're there. Houston Police Department certainly is aware uh, <laughs> that we're, um, we, we've had over, we think we calculate over 1,500 units watching us um, in, in those six years, uh, six and a half years. But that, that muscle memory is, is that's essential. We want, we want people to understand that in addition to voting, there are other components and that we need to be, wherever the right takes this, takes all this, we need, we need to be able to respond to that wherever that goes. Okay, now tell us a little bit now. Let's get a little bit local. And for those that are listening, both uh, internationally and throughout the United States, what Neil is doing applies all over. So I want you to listen. If you're not here in Houston, I'd like you to listen in the context of what you can do in your municipality, in your city, in your county, in your state. Go ahead, Neil. Yeah, that's that's really appropriate. Uh, th- these are circumstances that exist in many of our many of our cities. Um, so the Houston Democracy Project, we, we want to make certain that Houston council candidates, uh, mayoral and controller candidates talk about democracy uh, and not just talk about democracy, but 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 actually uh, fight for it. And one thing that I've been stressing is not being in coalition with uh, voters who are not pro-democracy. So what we have among many of our, because our races are technically nonpartisan, the Republicans don't treat them as nonpartisan. Um, But because our races are technically nonpartisan, a lot of our council Democrats feel the need, candidates, to reach out to Republican voters or to seek the endorsement of Republican office holders. And in normal circumstances, that would be that would be fine. 30, 20, 30, 40 years ago, that, that's how it is. The old saying is that there's no Republican or Democratic way to fill a pothole. But we don't need authoritarians and white supremacists in charge of filling uh, the pothole. So to give it a concrete example, there's a, there's a candidate named Nick Hellyer, who's a Democrat 
running an at-large two. There are uh, five at-large council seats in 11 districts in Houston. And Nick Hellyer is a Democrat, and he has taken the endorsement of an incumbent Republican councilwoman, Amy Peck. And what, what I asked him in, in, in a recent blog post is before Mr. Hellyer took Ms. Peck, Councilwoman Peck's endorsement, did he make certain that uh, she has spoken up within the Republican Party for democracy? Has she distanced herself and made clear that she won't support the insurrectionist Trump? There are two members of Houston City Council, uh, Republicans, uh, Mary Nan Huffman and Mike Knox, who have talked about the need to audit uh, our elections, supported the 20 Republicans who are seeking to undo 20 different Harris County Democratic wins in 2022 that's still in the courts, headed to the Texas Supreme Court, which is nine to nothing. Um, Republican, Republican appointed. Yeah. Republican appointed. And so, um, you know, these council candidates will say, hey, we should talk to other people. Um, there's nothing wrong with reaching out. And ideally, that would be so. But they take a position that they say is centrist, um, this bipartisanship uh, and, and talking to the Republican Party without at the very least getting the assurance that the people that they're talking to support democracy. And I'm not I'm not I'm not suggesting that Ms. Peck holds negative racial views. But what I'm saying is she has the ability as an office holder to speak to those within the Republican Party who do. And so, for example, Councilman Knox has testified in front of Senator Betancourt in the Texas State Senate in some of these election bills that came through last session. He testified about worrying about food and water being distributed in the voter line, right? And we've seen these, these crazy laws that inhibit, restrict food and water. And he has said that some of our election judges, those are the people who sign you in, when you go to vote, should be punished. Um, so think of think think just think of that. And this guy is a councilman in the most diverse city in America, and he is a he's running in the Republican primary for Harris County Sheriff in twenty twenty four. So do you want someone who holds those views with the top law enforcement position um, in the county? Absolutely not. I, I, and Nate, let's make it explicit here. Your contention is you don't hold it against any Democrat who tries to uh, bring everybody into the fold. But in, in so sure. doing, you want to make sure that you don't bring in those uh, those people who will do harm to our democracy. And I think you've named a couple who have it, it by their objection to the uh, their similar ob objection to what Trump is doing to our local our local uh, elections are actually presenting a clear and present danger to democracy. It should not. It should not surprise anybody that most of the vote in Houston tends to be blue. Every so often, you have right. some uh, uh, republic responsible Republicans that will get elected in a blue county. But again, just like there are certain counties in Texas th that are demonstrably red because of ideology, ideology and culture, Houston is a blue county, and there should be no no surprise that. Most of the people elected in Harris County will have a democratic slant. So, I mean, um, mm -hmm. uh, uh, it is important that that is stressed and it is important to understand as well that anybody, anybody opposing the election in uh, that occurred in 2022, where it has been proven that there were no shenanigans, they are bordering on as you as 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 attempting some sort of an autocratic type behavior. Continue, please, my friend. Right. That this stuff is direct. We don't we don't necessarily always take it down to, to the level of where we are. But here in Houston, we've lost our democratically elected school board in what just 60 years ago was a Jim Crow city. Um, like I referenced, we have members of Houston City Council. Who, who subscribe to or who to allude to, who seem to support these anti-democratic values. We have the 20 lawsuits. Uh, people, people kept saying that that, that Melia uh, running against Judge Hidalgo last, uh, last year uh, had some of these views. And, and, and I think it's proven to be the case. She's, she's one of these folks in court, still in a campaign mode, it seems. Commissioner Ramsey, the one Republican on the 
Harris County Commission in 2021 voted against certifying the 2021 uh, elections. And so we, we have these folks right here. We don't necessarily uh, visualize it. We don't think of the individual uh, local official. And, and, and one of the things that the Houston Democracy Project will be talking about as we go along, for example, is the school board race in Cypress Fairbanks Independent School District, which is one of the 50 largest districts in the country, where there's currently a 4-3 sane majority, non-book banning majority, and all four of those uh, candidates, and I'm, I'm, I'm not, I don't even know that all of them are Democrats. Um, so the issue isn't inherently, uh, we have to have, as President Biden would say, we have to have a two-party or, a, or some might say a more a three a multi party a multi party there can't be one party right and and part of the problem is is that if one if we have a two party system and one of the parties is autocratic and anti democratic then in essence you have no option you you basically have a one party system because there's no there's no way um, there's no way to support the other party without supporting anti democratic. And frankly, what that ends up doing is is it, it inhibits the ability to hold Democrats accountable because they know that you don't have any option. Well, before you go, um, I, I want to uh, we have a caller that I want to bring in. I want to see if they, he wants to ask you a question. But I want to remind our audience that a lot uh, you, you always have to be careful. It's not always a, a party thing because the takeover, the takeover of the of HISD, the the nail in the coffin was a Democrat named Harold Dutton. And luckily, Absolutely. luckily, he now has a challenger that uh, we will be bringing on for an interview at some time in the near future to say that, to, to, again, somebody who turns over a public school district to a bunch of people who don't believe in books, who don't believe in mm -hmm. teaching real history, as well as whose true purpose is to privatize schools so that the private sector, uh, for a profit motive, would use your kids as props to make money, that should never be forgiven on anybody, whether political or otherwise, who does that. Mm -hmm. So uh, that, that is a statement that needs to be made. Let's go ahead and bring Joe into the conversation, and then we'll continue with the program thereafter. Go ahead, Joe. Come on in. Hey, man. I got a couple of comments for you this morning. Good morning to you. Good morning, sir. Um, uh, man, I just have to say, after that tirade, I, I think you guys are living in complete and utter fantasy land. Sure. Um, Go ahead. School board was taken over because of because of just uh, graft and corruption that really mm -hmm. has invaded and inhabits, you know, the majority of the Democrat Party. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying you know, the Republican form of graft and uh, corruption it occurs in, in different ways, but mm -hmm. you, know, you guys are nothing but a couple of DNC operatives who write hit pieces. Mm -hmm. And and I don't know where you you make your money, but 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 the you know it's it's really you know to sit up here and say that um, you know the the 2020 election was proven to be you know uh, uh, the cleanest in history is just out and out false. Every everyone with a pair of eyes saw that it was just utterly rigged. Okay, and, which and election are you talking about, sir? Which election? 2020 or 2022? 2020, 2020, 2020 presidential election. Oh, okay. Last Go ahead. You guys are so stoked about about getting women to call, mm -hmm. uh, and and but but honestly, I get this creepy romance vibe that needs to just go away before you, I think you can expect women to start to call. Also, on a daily basis, you support a rapist, mm -hmm. right? You you lend support to Joe Biden, mm -hmm. who many years ago, his uh, uh, one of his aides accused him of raping her. Mm -hmm. She did the right thing right then. She called the police, but then they said, "Yo, well, Senate rules. What say? What happens in the Senate stays in the Senate," and it was completely covered up, right? And at Tara Reid is her name, and and you know it's it's all fine to say me too, me too, except mm -hmm. for her. You guys overlooked the fact that that creepy old baby sniffer uh, is a rapist, and I think I honestly I think y'all support of 
that clown and his family um mm-hmm. it's why you don't get them so more joe people. joe joe okay i gave you a whole lot of time to talk because as you know i'm a I, i'm very fear I, i'm very fear don't hang up you though do. but don't hang up at all at all the same way that i gave you my ears i'd like you to have mine you, i'd have like to have your ears now all right i don't like Bring to play up. I don't like to play what about ism, but in in some respect, I think you're forcing me to play what about ism. Okay, so there is one incident that one young lady reported with, uh, and, and I'm going into this because I want to let you know that I was in fact listening to you. There's one particular incident with with uh, with Joe Biden that a woman accused him way after the fact right of doing something uh, i don't know how you prove that but let's let's just leave that there one person let's let's leave that on the table uh but when we it was you, after the fact. okay let's for, for right just like i listened to you i'll ask you to do the same for me all right now okay. uh now as far as uh trump is concerned i think it has been a constancy with Trump. And in fact, he is on tape talking about what he does to women. My question to you on that one issue, let's do one at a time on that one issue. Does that offend you? So he doesn't. It's a yes or no, sir. It's a yes or no. Does it offend you on the way he speaks about in, grabbing on in, in women, context, et cetera? In the context that he that he says it right, he he is with his. He, it's a secret recording. He's with his crew. He's laughing and joking, and 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 no, honestly, no. So it doesn't um, offend you. Okay, that's fine. It's fine. It doesn't offend. It's okay. That's fine. It, that doesn't offend you. It doesn't offend you that uh, he a, a judge, an impartial judge, said that. Uh, in, in, in as much as he was, conv- he was uh, found liable for sexually abusing a woman, that in, but in our parlance today, what he did was rape. That doesn't offend you as well. Did she bring that up at the, at the time or was it much later? After she brought it up at the time and, and there were corroborating witnesses, several corroborating witnesses that convinced her not to bring it to the legal sphere because of who Donald Trump was. Oh, well, you know, I, I haven't seen those, those facts, but yeah, that's, that's a okay, problem. Well, that would be a problem with you. I, I, I'm, I'm so happy that you said that, Joe, because I just got a new impression of you because at first it was pretty bad. Now, let me continue a little bit further. When it comes to the school district, I am not going to deny that the school district has problems, but I, I think any particular person who turns over that district to a person who, to a person who believe in a voucher system, to a person who believe in the privatization of education uh, for a group that doesn't want that, for parents who don't want that. And remember, uh, uh, purportedly, the Republican Party says that they believe in two things, local control and parent control. And in having the HISD being turned over to a, a board dictated by the governor, both of those things were negated. Or don't you have to agree with that by definition? Uh, you know, it, it, come on, it, Joe. It's it, a yes or no, Joe. Come on, let's let's not, let I let's. But it's not yes or no because because this is an this is a crime enforcement thing that they're doing. They're 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 fighting fraud. Uh, again, no, no, no. I, I, let me let me stop you a second. Fraud is not if 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 they're fighting fraud. That's it's in the legal domain, and we do have. Uh, prosecutors, whether it's be state prosecutors, if the local prosecutors don't take control, the state could bring a prosecutor and prosecute the specific corruption if there was corruption without saying I'm taking over the entire school board undemocratically. Don't you agree with that, sir? No, this seems like a seems like a, a rash move. Seems like a big uh, thank you. Again, what I'm trying to show, brother Joe, brother Joe, what I'm trying to show you is one thing: when we sit down and talk together, right, 
and not take things from the inflammatory way that you would hear on Fox News or otherwise, that we generally come to the similar conclusions because we're both, we both care about kids. We both care about our country. We both care about our city. I got to move on, Joe. But the reason I wanted to bring this up, right, is in as much as you had a diatribe against myself and my brother, Neil Aquino, I think we're closer than you believe. So um, give me a closer before I jump to Johnny. You know my closer, baby. Let's make America great again. Thank you, brother. That's good enough. I want to make America great. I don't know if, about the again portion, but I want to make America great. Hey, Johnny, come on in and say something to Neil. Neil is in the house here just watching. How you doing, Johnny? The mayor of politics done right. And good morning from Mayor McCheese to Captain <laughs> Reynolds rapping Magic Jack. And you need to say hello to Neil Aquino, our, our resident activist. Okay, resident activist, hello to you too. This poem I did not write back in September 1st, 10 days before the 9-11 attack, thinking about Joe in 2023. But Joe, this is for you, and it's not a creepy poem. When life passed us upon the rough open sea, relaxation in cooperation with controlled deep inhalation can be key. Identify when it's not as important to fight as it is to fly the currents of apparent discord and anarchy, much in the way of the cork upon the ocean or the bird or balloon along waves of the jet stream. As sun is to moon, as rough is to smooth, so is war to peace and harmony. So he, Sun Su, then Kai Si. Step back, calm down, think, then act, or not. So, Joe, what do you know? You led us all kinds of clues as to your true agenda. You are not here to criticize in a constructive manner. You are contentious, and you're full of hate, and you are projecting Hold, onto... Brother Johnny, br Johnny, let me stop you. I love you, Johnny, but let me just tell you one thing, okay? And and I think you saw that with Joe. Look, um, I you are a learned man, uh, etc. You know your stuff very well. But... And, and this is where my empathy and being around a whole lot of people, including my brother, Neil Aquino here, I learn a whole lot of stuff. And what happens is you are informed by sources that happen to be correct. All right, Johnny? Other people are informed by sources that are not. And the question is, how do you address those folks that have trust in something they shouldn't? And that's where I talk about conversation. So I try not to really, you get where I'm, you know where I'm coming from, Johnny. So anyway, you know, questions for Neil Aquino. I was about to get there to address Joe. He's the one okay. I'm concerned with now. I'm not concerned with the soul, even though I'm, I'm a reformed Catholic. I'm more concerned with the discourse and where this country is going, the general mm -hmm. discourse. And Joe needs to know that I... And other and other uh, libs and progressives mm -hmm. and the Democrats I criticize all the time for being too centrist. You know my criticism of yes, the centrist sir. party. We generally or mostly don't project onto the other side what uh, we are guilty of doing. And being it's the other way around. So Joe needs to be honest. Think about Donald Trump's promise to the American. Well, I, and I and I think look, listen. I mean, the second question I asked 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 Joe. Joe did you know? I mean, when I explained to Joe what happened with the uh, the the uh, Asian uh, Asian whatever her name is, he said, "Well, if that is the case, that is problematic. It shows that Joe is a it, Joe displayed some empathy there. Again, a, a lot of it has, and I don't want to show like I'm just defending the folks on the right. What I'm trying to do is trying to create that path and that place for folks to land. Because, I mean, when you have been ill-informed or misinformed or I don't know if you remember the story I repeat over and over again, when a woman uh, found out I was a progressive and the first thing she said is, but you're so nice. And the reason why is Joe thinks you have horns. All right. Joe think Neil Aquino has horns because that's what they've been told. 
And they, they've made a story that made it look like we have horns, okay? That's what it's about. But anyway, I want to bring... Neil had been sitting there for a while, not saying anything. Ask Neil something so that we can get this conversation going, Johnny. Neil, do you agree or disagree that Donald Trump lied to the American people about not taking a uh, presidential salary for four years, and that when he made off with more than $1.6 billion, billion, that that would be contentious enough for both sides to put him in prison and start healing? Uh, well, I, I, I do believe that people need to be uh, prosecuted for wrongdoing, and that, that's part of healing. I'm certainly, um, so it's been important that uh, no one be above the law, to use uh, the cliche, which isn't always true in the United States. And um, so I do think that part of part of healing and part of, of, of maintaining democracy, uh, or maybe having a little bit more democracy, is is prosecuting a wrongdoer, no matter how uh, how high up it goes. And just, you know, for the purpose of my um, my talk here, I, you know, we, it's, it's important to talk about the national scene, but the local uh, the local matters a great deal. And as we have an authoritarian uh, state government and as we have people in county and municipal government who don't even believe in elections. And that's why I keep emphasizing this. There's a lot of other issues I'd like to talk about. I'm in my mid 50s. I didn't picture that we'd be at the point where I'm just talking about, hey, can we just have a free election, right, when there's so much else going on? So um, I'm always going to come back uh, here on, on, uh, on KPFT on politics, politics and right. right. Yeah. To to to, uh, to 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 the local issues and that we hold our local officials accountable and 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 with our local Democrats, we ask that you be ready to fight for democracy and that um, and that we you know we don't want a political class that finds accommodation with each other um, and leaves rank and file Houstonians out on the cold especially when I think some of those Republican officials uh, will, will, will in time turn on the Democrats who are trusting them. And, 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 and hopefully we can get to a point um, where, where there's mutual agreement again, at least that, that election results be respected. There's no public safety without democracy. Uh, it's a top public safety issue. So I'm, gonna, I'm uh, holding the highest accountable is is part of that law and order and, and democracy. I can't believe I used that phrase, but that's how we've been. Um, Can I interrupt, Neil? I want to interrupt you because yeah. you said you cannot believe you use the phrase law and order. No, we are law and order. Uh, you know, a well, lot we of, are, right? yeah, we all are. And, and, and too often we've a cop to these folks, uh, you know, when they say law and order, it's like we are anti-police or anti, no, no, we're anti-bad things, but we are law and order. I I, are, I agree with that. Facts. And one of one of the most interesting thing, um, right? I was just I was thinking of the old Richard, um, you know, you, uh, old old Richard Nixon usage of it. And um, but it's it's the truth. Um, it's it's the truth that uh, what we want is is the Constitution to be upheld and, and election results to be upheld and and for all people to be accountable of of whatever party. And in many respects, it's a fundamentally conservative argument. And uh, it, uh, um, we're, we're, when we're put into a circumstance where we're in, a, in an anti-democratic or authoritarian moment, it's a different type of politics. And so that comes back to the bipartisanship um, that might have been ideal 20, 30, 40 years ago. Senator Whitmire keeps saying, so Senator Whitmire, State Senator Whitmire is running for mayor. And Senator Whitmire keeps saying, I won't apologize for working across the aisle um, I want to apologize for bipartisanship, but one of Senator Whitmire's best friends uh, seems to be Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick, who is tweeting stuff like our election should be redone in Harris County and taking away all the political autonomy he can from Houston and Harris County and essentially from multiracial democracy. That's, that's what this is an attack on. So when Egberto said, in your city, wherever you are, um, this is relevant to you. This, this is, this is the truth. And so I, I'm fine in a normal circumstance to be in coalition with whomever, uh, moves a good agenda forward, but I don't need to be, uh, in coalition at this point with people who want to take away my most basic rights. And I think that the Democrats that we're supporting at the local level have the obligation from, from any Republican uh, and council member or that they're getting an endorsement from, 
to ask the most basic questions of do you support democracy? It's it, uh, You can give someone a private assurance and you can say, hey, uh, you know, I, I know in, in private you say that uh, the right is crazy or Trump is crazy. But that's, for example, I referenced earlier Councilwoman Peck. And I remember very specifically when she campaigned four years ago, uh, uh, photos with Trump supporters. Um, and you think it's just politics. It's just casual stuff. You got to do that. But these are people who want to take away our rights and take away our right to vote. Thank you very much, Neil. Uh, Johnny, let me let me just I have to salute the whole bunch of people that we have on the Internet, including Melanie Keelan from Barcelona, Spain, Eric Hayes from Houston, John Carter. I don't know if John is in Japan or the or US today or our air pilot uh, here in, in town. Uh, Akita Peron, who is uh, who is on as well. And uh, I think I missed somebody, but if I, I missed you, I'll, I'll reach out to you uh, later on. Johnny, anyway, give me a closer because I got to bring Gonzalo into the fold. Sure. Alberto and your guest. I agree. I agree. And I would say to people like Joe and Brian and uh, Barry that we, on our side, we are actually pro life. And that they have a lots of learning, lots of explaining, explaining to do. And yeah, I agree with your guest. It's time for us to up our game and call our own people to account in a brutal way. Because the other side, if we don't do it, they, they'll do it, and this country will no longer exist. Thank you very much, Johnny. Let's go ahead and brought, brought, uh, bring on Gonzalo. Come on in, Gonzalo. And by the way, folks, the number is 713-526-5738. I had a complete show that included three other topics other than Aquino. But you know what? I, I think I like where we're going here. So remember to go to politicsdoneright.com slash newsletter for all the videos and other things that we were going to talk about today. Politicsdoneright.com slash newsletter. Let's bring Gonzalo into the fold. Talk to me, Gonzalo. Good morning, Alberto. Buenos dias, hermano. Como estas? Muy bien, muy bien. Uh, uh, first of all, thank you for bringing uh, to the audience uh, people from diverse uh, viewpoints politically. Uh, I had a chance to uh, listen to Mr. Aquino and Johnny, our friend. And uh, I think uh, this yeah. is the value. Uh, of uh, this program, um, uh, we need to educate our audience to uh, be free to make up their points, but to uh, also to respect and uh, try to find a common ground among different um, among the diversity of uh, opinions and political trends that we have. I think that's the main goal that you have. Well, we have to do that. I mean, the truth of the matter is none of us are leaving this country. We're all Americans, right? So uh, I, I love breaking bread with everybody. Anybody who talk comes here to Kingwood and, and Neil has been out here to Kingwood several times. I break bread with everybody. I don't care what political affiliation. I don't care ethnicity, all that good stuff. I have fun. I love I, I love all that kind of stuff. And I think that's how that's where we all need to get. If you know, we are we are a special country, man. Uh, when you when you talk about everybody, we represent every single country in the world and we have a we have a responsibility to do that after the, our genesis the beginning of how america came to be there's a hell of an at atoning that we have to do we owe that to the world we owe that to the world and that's why i say as being uh, as being a naturalized citizen who who feel no less american than anybody else uh, that is one thing that I that I said. That is what my one hopeful contribution, and that is we got to keep everybody together. And I, again, you, you you talk it out, you speak it out. And by the way, Kita Peron is in Boston. Thank you, Kita Peron from Boston. Um, so I, I I I always want to preach that. But anyway, continue, Gonzalo. Before we continue, yes. Uh, also, I would like to bring to. Uh, the phone to uh, people, uh, women, and I know uh, I have a good friend that works with me in school, Nikki. I hope that she's listening. I, I know she is a progressive, uh, uh, I mean, she has 
uh, something to say. But anyway, so thank you very much for the opportunity to uh, give us uh, food for thought. And uh, one more time, uh, you're doing the right thing. I think uh, whether I disagree slightly with uh, Johnny in some uh, things that he said, I think we have a common ground, and um, Mr. Aquino. I think uh, we also have a common ground. And uh, let me let me correct that because he corrects it for me all of the time. Nosotros somos Latino, pero él es Aquino. <laughs> Aquino, yeah. Okay, whatever. <laughs> okay, but anyway, so um, uh, thank you very much. Uh, uh, you and I had some disagreements about Cuba. About yes, others. we do. We have a common ground, and that's why we talk to each other every day, and we share uh, opinions and points of view. Thank you, my day. thank you, my brother. Um, anyway, um, you know, I, I, since since the the lines are empty right now, I do want to play one short piece, a two a, a minute and thirty piece about you know the hurricanes are going out there right now. There is a concern that uh, the MAGA folks in the Congress, and not all of them are MAGA, but the MAGA folks are Congress, are going to try to hold uh, the Congress hostage. You know, hurricanes are probably going to blow up because of the temperature of the sea, etc. Well, Joe Biden kind of put folks on notice yesterday. It's like, if you don't make sure to fund FEMA, well, I tell you what, just listen to it and then we'll take it on the other side. I think President Biden just put Republicans, specifically MAGA, on notice with regards to can we continue to expect funding for these hurricanes that are coming, these fires that are coming? You know, right now, it seems like the Republicans want to use it as some sort of a cudgel on the president's head. Don't think it's going to work. I want you to listen to what he has to say. Mr. President, can you assure Americans that the federal government is going to have the emergency funding that they need to get through this hurricane season? The answer is, if I can't do that, I'm going to point out why. How can we not respond? My God, how can we not respond to these needs? And so I'm confident, even though there's a lot of talk from some of our friends up in the Hill about the cost, we've got to do it. This is the United States of America. Yes. And I think he has to do a lot more. He has to show that we are going to start calling people out now and making a stink about it. I don't think the president or Democrats, for that matter, have been sufficiently active in calling out consistently, continually what MAGA has been doing. Maybe they'll start and this time maybe they won't start too late. All right. So, I mean, as it turns out, uh, did you hear that, Neil? I'm not sure if uh, it was it projected. Did. Yeah. Okay. Good. It. Good. Anyway, uh, Neil, uh, going forward, tell us a little bit about, uh, first of all, I want to tell folks that Neil is going to be coming on uh, here on Thursdays around this time to discuss the new issues relative to local um, local. Uh, Houston, Harris County politics. And like I say all the time, this doesn't only apply to Houston. What the work that Neil and his organization is doing to enhance people's political acumen is not just for here in Houston, but throughout the state, throughout the country. Where do we go from here, Neil? Okay, that's very kind. And I, I, I appreciate the, 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 um, being here on Thursdays, and I appreciate the opportunity. Um, and when with the hurricanes, you know, right to bring it back local, um, the, uh, the the land office here in uh, Texas has not given Houston anywhere near its or Harris County uh, anywhere near its fair share of har Hurricane Harvey funds, and that's been a fight going on for a few years. And there were stories, um, you know, in the Chronicle and elsewhere that hurricane money has been going to inland communities. And they were building uh, wh whatever, uh, but it wasn't it wasn't flood infrastructure and and the place that got the most damage. And again, uh, multiracial democracy and and diverse uh, places are starved of resources out of what simply seems to be anger, anger at who we are, and anger at how we live, and anger at simply existing uh, seems to be the way. Um, and and also then there is the kind of intellectual tension that's been. In, in this show a little bit in a positive way 
where we want to, we need to be able to talk to other people. Uh, we need to be able to have more than one party. Uh, we need to not shut off half the population or whatever it is without being able. And then there is this threat that, uh, that our right to vote and election results won't be respected. So we're, we're, we're sort of asked to navigate this. And it's important that our local elected the candidates and, and officials be asked to navigate this um, and, and, and help, help us manage this, help us manage this. So um, the Houston Democracy Project, you can Google it, Houston Democracy Project, and it's at neilaquino.com, N-E-I-L-A-Q-U-I-N-O, neilaquino.com. And there's a daily blog on the site. And then there's also um, an introductory page just talking about how you can ask your city council member, um, will you show up in 2024 to campaign? Will you, uh, and, 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 and not just sit back after you've asked people to support you in 2023, will you use your campaign funds to help develop new black and brown uh, organizing talent in Houston and Harris County? Will you ask police unions, and I'm not, I'm not talking about the police, will you ask police unions to stop supporting people who don't respect our elections. It's one thing to support uh, uh, Abbott or Patrick before November 8th. You shouldn't do that. But it's another thing after uh, when they're saying we should undo our elections. It's another thing um, to say um, that that's OK to accept that. And it's a matter of real concern when when armed safety officers support candidates who don't respect uh, elections, and I'm not. I'm not bringing up all the police issues. That there are issues up there, but the, sometimes the, the theme is reflexively: you're anti-police, you're anti-that. But at the very least, we can ask our police unions to not support people who would take away our rights. And as long as they do that, and we see sometimes where police unions are willing to bypass multiracial governance in cities or counties and appeal directly to extremely conservative red state governors or legislatures. That's a matter of basic public safety. And we need to have um, we need to have new definitions, broader definitions of public safety that include basic rights, freedoms and democracy. And we need to insist that our elected officials, um, even even if it's easy to socialize or become comfortable and think that that person, two, three, four chairs over, at the legislative t- table or the council table is is okay. Maybe they've given you a private assurance, but that that in these circumstances just just isn't enough. Neil Aquino, uh, the what should I call you? The president of the Houston Democracy Project, the founder of the Houston yeah. Democracy well, Project. I, I, seems a bit pretentious, but I'm I'm running that shop, and I'm gonna. Uh, um, it's going to continue. So after municipal elections and a municipal runoff, then the Harris County Democratic and Texas Democratic primaries are next March and then into November of 24. And one of the things I want to do, so electoral politics matter a lot, but I want to help inspire and strengthen and build uh, diverse, multiracial, pro-democracy coalitions. And if we get into a circumstance where elections are overturned, or we get into, a, like, for example, um, John Whitmire, the state senator, wants state uh, DPS, Texas police, to be patrolling uh, uh, Houston. Uh, we get we get into circumstances where 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 we feel that our our, our we, that we have to respond in addition to voting. I want us to have the muscle memory of showing up, to use the uh, term you used earlier. Um, muscle memory and and uh, an imagination to show up. Like Well, great. Thank you, Neil Aquino, for spending some time with us today. Today was a, an introduction of what you do, uh, but thank you great. so kindly for uh, what, what you're doing and what you'll continue to do. You have a wonderful rest of your day, my brother. Thank you. Thanks to everyone listening. See you next Thursday. Take care, buddy. All right, folks, uh, continuing with politics, continuing with politics done right. And I think let me make sure and get to the right screen now. Continuing with politics done right, folks. Oh, we have a caller. Michael, come on in, Michael or Mikkel. You're on. Sir, good morning. Good morning, sir. Uh, Don't let Neil go. I wanted to ask him about. Okay, well, I think Neil may still be here. Let me see if I can get him back on the screen. Neil may still be here. 
Neil, are you still here? Here I am, yes. All right, sir. good. Go ahead. Uh, go ahead, Mikhail. Uh, Neil, supposedly we elected yes, this Lena Hidalgo, and now she's gone. I don't know where. Um, and I heard she's going to resign this week. So I was wondering, what are your thoughts on that? Well, I, I think she was duly elected. I think she'll continue in office. I think she was brave to talk. Uh, we know where she's gone. She talked about having some concerns with depression and her mental well-being. And uh, she offered leadership, uh, not in not in leaving, uh, but in but remaining present. with, with One at a time, sir. Uh, Neil is still responding. Go ahead, Neil. And have some, some, some trouble with your mental well-being uh, uh, to get the help you need. So the example remains, and, and then she will return to her duties. Mikhail? Oh, that's a bunch of bull, Neil. She's going to resign this week. She's not depressed. Uh, she wasn't elected, Um okay. just got, I mean, there was 51 precincts that ran out of paper to get her elected. Mi Mikhail, Mikhail, Mikhail. Um, look, Ma Michael, let me, let me just, how do you say your name? Is it Mikhail or Michael? Michael. Okay, Michael. Look, <laughs> let, let, let me just say this, right? Um, Houston and Harris County is a decidedly blue county, okay? And it, it, all, most, and, and in so doing, most at large positions, not, not positions that are segmented like a Kingwood, uh, a Kingwood Clear Lake person that's being represented is likely going to come out to be a Republican because I live in Kingwood, but I know that it it's predominantly Republican. So what I'm saying, uh, Michael, is you don't have to like uh, Miss Miss uh, Hidalgo, you don't, and you don't even have to think she's good. We do. I think she's a great person. I think she's a very smart person. But you don't have to believe that. But let's let's start from the position that it is okay that we didn't win an election. But Michael, I have a lot of calls coming in right now, so I got to go. But I thank you for your call, and you keep listening and you keep thank calling. You. Okay, take care, buddy. All right, buddy. Let's go to Jesse Mona. Come on in, Jesse Mona. A lady, thank you. Come on in, Jesse Mona. Uh, maybe they'll the, the yeah. Are you, you're on, Jesse Mona? Come on in. So my, yes. Uh, Neil said that Whitmire said he wouldn't work with the other side. I was trying to find out, uh, do a fact check on that, and I concur with your sentiments about uh, Lena Hidalgo. Thank you, ma'am. Neil, do you want to answer that real quickly? So what's, yeah. What Senator Whitmire is saying is that Senator Whitmire stresses bipartisanship um, and, and, and talks about it. And, and we wanna, what we we're just trying to say is that's not inherently wrong. But yesterday's bipartisanship, he's been in the legislature for 49 years. Yesterday's bipartisanship is not today's bipartisanship. And I think if he's going to ask us to do that, then he needs to get assurances that the Republicans that he's working with believe in okay. our most our most. We got to be fast now, Neil. We had a lot of calls coming in. I uh, just wanted. Did that answer your question? Typical political answer. It did not, but I'm going to look. Well, let me just tell you. Let me tell you my opinion of of Whitmer. Then, as uh, here, I I I do not believe. I think Mr. Whitmer is too conservative for uh, Houston. Is my personal opinion. I think we need a more progressive person running a city that is decidedly more progressive. I don't know if you agree with that, Jismon, or not. I can agree with it. Thank you so much, Roberto. Enjoy the show. You have a wonderful day, ma'am. Uh, come on in, Brian. Yeah, I'm here. Yes, I'm listening, sir. Okay. Uh, well, first off, why isn't the mainstream media calling out Biden on, on his lies and his uh, cognitive degeneration? You know the latest um, said? No. Uh, he convinced Strom Thurmond to vote for the Civil Rights Act in 1964 when he was a senator. He actually said that. And nobody's calling him out on it. He couldn't uh, possibly. Him. He was okay. 21 years old at the age of 64. At, at, at 64. Uh, right now, that's above my pay grade because I didn't read that. But um, thank you for bringing that into the fold. Anything else you want to say, Brian? 
Yeah, you're not going to read it because the press doesn't report on it. If, if oh, you don't report on it, it doesn't oh, that is fine, to... Brian. And you know, well, I, I, I I can't I, argue. Go yeah. ahead, Neil. Real quick. Yeah. Real quick. Biden was in the Senate. The early can't 70s. Walk freak without, without. Yeah, Brian. Can't walk freak Brian. Without. Brian. We don't have to get. Uh, it's, it's super excited. Let me just say one thing, okay? I don't know you probably. I don't know if you're right or wrong on that one, okay? But let me just tell you something. I don't see how that is material to actually what's going to uh, function for both you and me, okay? There, uh, it's not material in my humble the opinion. Of the United States. And did uh, and look uh, for somebody for for a party that that that. Wait, wait, hold on. Let me just say this, Brian, real quick. For a party who has been represented from Donald Trump that has told hundreds of thousands of lies, I don't see how, you know, uh, something like that really makes an issue. But Brian, you always wait till the end of the show to call. Uh, thank you so kindly. I need to run to Peter for 30 seconds and then we got to get out of here. Thank you very much, Brian. Call me tomorrow. All right. Uh, let's go to Peter. Real quick, Peter, you got 30 seconds. Thank you so much. And yeah, I'd love to hear Neil talk a little more about the, the DPS and that. Uh, that You'll have to wait till next Thursday on that. Uh, say your piece real quick, my dear brother. Yeah, so nice to hear you guys. So yeah, that's what I'm worried that someone like a John Whitmire is, is going to be bringing like, like that, uh, you know, intimidating the voters not to vote, like if there's a threat of the police there guarding uh, at the polls, so that was just my concern. So I'd love to talk. Thank more you, about Peter. That. I gotta go. Gotta go to to the control room. All right, folks. Thank you so kindly. Let's throw it to the control room. Uh, uh, Howard and Jack. All righty then. Stay tuned for democracy now. And here's Jack. The right means to rule, not govern. All right. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I didn't expect him to be that sharp, but I love it. Anyway, folks, I want to thank Neil Aquino. Hey, Neil, you were here for the whole show. You were only supposed to be here for like 10, 15 minutes. I appreciate your stamina to stay around and, and answer some questions. Thank you so kindly, audience. Love you guys for your ears. Thank you for listening. To all my listeners who call in and are civil on these calls, thank you. My name is Egberto Willis. This is Politics Done Right. Thanks to the control room. You know how I end this, baby. I am what? Out! We spend a lot of time deconstructing the news, trying to, trying to parse it into a form that everybody can understand. We try to find those little nitpicks where uh, it goes, it flies above the fray, etc. If you really like these videos that we do, I want to ask a big favor. Please go ahead, number one, subscribe to our channel, and number two, please join if you can. Thank you so kindly for watching. Keep watching. Please remember to share. We must populate the entire internet with our progressive message, a message that we know is what most Americans say that they want. So help us please join.